بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الكريم وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما اللهم إننا نعوذ بك من علم لا ينفع ومن قلب لا يخشع ومن نفس لا تشبع ومن دعوة لا يسجاب لها أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته مرحبا بكم Welcome everyone to a reminder on Instagram live Today we'll be reading from the explanation of Riyal al-Salihin given by a Sheikh Abdul Aziz Ibn Baz Ta'ala and it's important as a student to constantly read material pertaining to Ar-Raqa'iq heart softeners as this topic inshallah ta'ala will be a motivator to help you in your journey in seeking Islamic knowledge so hopefully bi ibnillahi ta'ala we can make this a um, consistent video I guess maybe once a month or once every two weeks ala hasb al um, today we're going to take a look at a chapter collected by Imam Nawawi entitled Bab fi tafkiri fi azim makhluqat Allah ta'ala wa fana'i dunya wa ahwal al-akhirah wa sa'iri umurihima which could be roughly translated to mean chapter pertaining to the tafkir reflecting over pondering over meditating over the magnificent creations of Allah azza wa jalla and the passing away or the vanishing of the dunya and the terrors of the hereafter and other affairs pertaining to the dunya wal akhirah طيب in this chapter Imam Nawawi rahimahullah ta'ala he collects three ayat and a hadith depending on the what and depending on time we don't want to uh, go past maybe 20 minutes so we'll read as much as we can and translate to the best of our ability we'll be hitting nasta'in bismillah the first ayah he quotes from surah saba verse number 46 where allah azza wa jalla he says qul inna ma a'idhukum bi wahida an taqumu lillahi mathna wa furada thumma tatafakkaru which can be translated roughly the meaning of the ayah can say say o prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam I advise you to do only one thing stand up for the sake of Allah individually or in pairs and then reflect the second verse he mentions in Surah Al-Ali Imran verse number 190 to 191 inna fi khalqi samawati wal ardi wa layli wa nahari la ayatin li ulil albab alladhina yadhkuruna Allah qiyama wa qu'uda وعلى جنوبهم ويتفكرون في خلق السماوات والأرض ربنا ما خلقت هذا باطلا سبحانك فقنا عذاب النار which once again can be translated roughly to mean indeed in the creation of the heavens and earth and the alternation of the day and night there are signs for people of reason they are those who remember Allah while standing and sitting and laying on their sides and reflect on the creation of the heavens and earth and pray O oh our Lord you have not created all of this without purpose glory be to you protect us from the torment of the fire the third ayah he quotes Rahimahullah Ta'ala or set of ayat he quotes is from Surah Al-Ghashiyah where Allah Azza wa Jalla he says أَفَلَا يَنْظُرُونَ إِلَى الْإِبْنِ كَيْفَ خُلِقَتْ وَإِلَى السَّمَاءِ كَيْفَ رُفِعَتْ وَإِلَى الْجِبَالِ كَيْفَ نُصِبَتْ وَإِلَى الْأَرْضِ كَيْفَ سُطِحَتْ فَذَكِّرْ إِنَّمَا أَنْتَ مُذَكِّرْ Which can be translated to mean 
do they not ever reflect on camels how they were masterfully created how they were perfectly created and the sky how it was raised high and the mountains how they were firmly set up and the earth how it was leveled out spread out so continue to remind all or prophet prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam for your duty is only to remind and the fourth verse in surah muhammad he only quotes a juz from it a portion of it and the reason for that is because that portion the ayah uh, proves his point and is connected to the chapter heading where allah azza wa jalla he says afalam yasiru fil ardi fayanzuru which can be translated to mean have they not traveled throughout the land to see as for the hadith he collects under this bab he says he quotes the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam as saying al kaysu man dana nafsahu quoting a juz a portion of the hadith the matla the beginning of the hadith because in the previous bab speaking about al istiqama he quotes it in full so in this part of the bab he only quotes a portion of it which is translated to mean a wise man is the one who calls himself to account with the intent of and he refrains from doing evil deeds khayr so let's move on to the explanation these are the nusus under this chapter let's now move on to the explanation provided by a sheikh abdul aziz ibn baz rahimahullah ta'ala he says hadhihi al-ayat al-karimat wa ma ja'a fi ma'naha min al-ayat wal-ahadith that these noble verses and what is similar to them in the meaning found in other Quranic verses and narrations of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam tata'allaqu bil hathi wa targhibi fi at-tafkir fi ayat Allah they all are related to the topic of encouraging and inspiring interest and desire in reflecting over Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's signs وَعَظَمَتِ مَخْلُقَاتِهِ As well as the grandeur and greatness of His creation. وَدَلَالَتِهَا عَلَىٰ أَنَّهُ رَبُّ الْجَمِيعِ وَإِلَاهُ الْجَمِيعِ وَأَنَّهُ مُسْتَحِقٌ أَنْ يُعْبَدَ وَيُطَاعْ أَمْرُهُ And it also points to and proves that um, these are signs to show for the one who ponders and reflects that Allah Azza wa Jalla is the true Lord, Rabbul Jami' an owner of everything that exists and He is also Ilahul Jami' He is the deity of everything that exists as well and that He is Mustahiq He is truly deserving to be worshipped alone and yu'bada wa yuta'a amruhu and for his commandments to be obeyed and for his prohibitions to be avoided and for the servants to abstain from transgressing against his limits فَقَدَ فَصَّلَ آيَاتٍ وَوَعَذَ الْعِبَادِ وَذَكَّرَهُمْ Certainly Allah Azza wa Jalla has fully explained his verses in the Qur'an and through the Sunnah as well, of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he had ad- he has admonished the servants of Allah and reminded them so that they can what hatta yastaqimu wa hatta yaudu aldata li liqaihi la ilaha illallah. Yani so that they could be steadfast, have istiqama, be upright in their deen, and also so that they could prepare themselves in meeting Allah Azza wa Jalla وَحَتَّى يَبْتَعِدُوا عَنْ مَنَاهِي and also so that they can what? avoid and distance themselves from his prohibitions those things he made haram وَحَتَّى يَقِفُوا عِنْدَ حُدُودِهِ and stop at his limits that he's placed وَحَتَّى يُعَذِّمُهُ حَقَّ تَعْظِيمِهِ عَزَّ وَجَلَّ And also so that they could revere him in a manner that he deserves. وَلِهَذَا يَقُولُ جَلَّ وَعَلَىٰ And for this reason, Allah Azza wa Jalla, He says, قُلْ يَا مُحَمَّدُ قُلْ يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ Say, O Muhammad, 
Say, O Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, calling the first ayah under this bab, Qul innama a'idhukum wahida. Say, O Prophet, I advise you to do only one thing. What is it? An taqumu lillahi mathna wa furada thumma tatafakkaru. That you stand up for the sake of Allah, individually or in pairs, yani by yourself or with companions, and reflect. And reflect. Yani reflect over what? To reflect over the creation. Allahu amra nabiyahu an ya'idhuhum bi wahida. Allah has commanded His Prophet to admonish the people with one thing. Wahiyya tafakkur. Wa nadhari wa tabassuri. Wa adam al ghafla. And it is reflection, meditation, contemplation, and to think about the creation. And to also avoid any type of heedlessness and negligence. يَقُومُ الرَّجُلُ وَحْدَهُ أَوْ مَعَ أَخِيهِ يُفَكِّرَانِ وَيَنْظُرَانِ وَيُحَاسِبَانِ أَنفُسَهُمَا Or a person should stand. Should stand up either by himself or with others and reflect and contemplate over Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's signs and hold themselves responsible trying to find the answer the answer for what? the answer لماذا خلق هذا الكون يعني the reason why this universe was created they should ask themselves why was this universe created? ولماذا خلق الثقلان and why, were, why was mankind and jinn kind created? وَلِمَاذَا بُعِثَ الرُّسُلُ And why were the messengers sent? وَلِمَاذَا نُزِّلَتْ الْكُتُبُ And why were the books revealed? All of that was done for one purpose. What is it? To worship your Lord and to obey Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says, لَمْ تُنَزَّلِ الْكُتُبُ عَبَثًا that the books were not send in, sent in vain, yani without any purpose. وَلَمْ تُرْسَلِ الرُّسُلُ عَبَثًا And the messengers were not sent yani in vain, without any purpose. He says, بَلْ كُلُّهَا لِأَمْرٍ عَظِيمٍ Rather, the purpose was for a tremendous affair. All of it was done in order for the creation to know their Lord وَتَعَبُّدِهِ And to worship Him as well. Subhanahu, glory be to him who is free from all imperfections. Qala Taala, he quotes a verse in Surah Al-Dhariyat, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ And I have not created jinn kind nor mankind except so that they shall worship me. And he also says in another verse, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا مِنْ قَبَلِكَ مِنْ رَسُولٍ إِلَّا نُوحِي إِلَيْهِ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا أَنَا فَاعْبُدُونَ and I have not sent any messenger before you speaking to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam except that we reveal to him or to them that they should say La ilaha illa ana that there's nothing worthy of worship except for me fa'buduni so worship me meaning Allah Azza wa Jalla wa qala ta'ala and Allah Azza wa Jalla also says in Surah Al-Nahl وَلَقَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ رَسُولًا أَنْ يَعْبُدُ اللَّهِ وَاجْتَنِبُ الطَّاغُوتِ That certainly we have sent to every single nation a messenger commanding them to worship Allah alone and avoiding anything worship besides Him. And he quotes another verse or two verses in Surah Hud where Allah Azza wa Jalla says أَلَفْ كتاب أحكمت آياته ثم فصلت من لدن حكيم خبير ألا تعبدوا إلا الله إنني لكم منه نذير وبشير. What could be translated to mean? ألف لام را كتاب أحكمت. This is a book whose verses are well perfected. أحكمت آياته. ثُمَّ فُصِّلَتْ And then it was fully explained without any doubt in it مِنْ لَدُونْ حَكِيمٍ خَبِيرٍ 
and it is from the one who is all aware and all wise. Then he quotes another verse, Kitab un Anzalnahu ilayka Mubarakun liyadabbaru ayatihi wa liyatadhakkara ulul albab, Surah Asad. It is a book that we sent down to you. Blessed. Yani it is a blessed book that we sent down to you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, so that the people may reflect over its verses and those who have yani albab, those yani ashab al uqul those with intellect, those who ponder and reflect, may be reminded by it. Then he quotes another verse where Allah Azza wa Jalla he says, Inna hadha al Quran yahdi lillati hi aqwam. That certainly this Quran it guides to that which is mo most upright and just. Then Allah he quotes another verse, Qul huwa lilladina amanu huda wa shifa. Say, O Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the Quran it is for those who have iman, and for them this Quran is a form of guidance and a cure. And he also quotes, quotes another verse, وَنَزَّلْنَا عَلَيْكَ الْكِتَابِ And we sent down to you the kitab, O Muhammad, يعني يا Muhammad, تِبْيَانًا As a form of a shah, an explanation, لِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ For everything. Also as a hudan, as a form of guidance, وَرَحْمَةً And a form of mercy, وَبُشْرَى لِلْمُسْلِمِينَ For those who submit their will to Allah Azza wa Jalla. And Allah also says in Surah Muhammad, أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنَ أَمْ عَلَىٰ قُلُوبٍ أَقْفَالُهَا Do they not ponder, reflect over the Qur'an, or are there locks upon their hearts? And he quotes Tayyip, so he ends with, this is the explanation of the first ayah. Then he goes on to explain the second ayah. إِنَّ فِي خَلْقِ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَاخْتِلَافِ اللَّيْلِ وَالنَّهَارِ لَآيَاتٍ لِأُولِي الْأَلْبَابِ he says, regarding this part of the verse, that certainly in the creation of the heavens and earth, and the changing or alternation of the night and day, there are signs. Yani, he says, the Shaykh says, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, Dala'il wa Barahim. Yani, meaning clear evidences and indisputable proofs. Li'ul al albab. For whom? The Shaykh says, Yani for those who have, who possess sound intellects. And then the Shaykh says that most of the people, nas, ma that most of the people, they don't have any intellect. And they're like the animals. Nas, most of the people, they're like animals. He says, ma ya'qiluna, they do not use their intellect. Wala yafhamun nor do they understand. Illa ma yakuluna wa yashrabuna wa yankihun. Except what they eat, right? The only, the only affair they give importance to is what they eat and what they drink and yani procreating. Getting married, having relations, etc. Tayyip, um that's the only thing they worry about. How to eat, how to drink, and how to procreate. Wahakida. And for that reason, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says, Fi akfir al khalq, he says about most of the people, most of the creation, Am tahsabu anna akfaruhum yasma'una aw ya'qilun. Do you believe, do you think that most of the people yasma'una, they use their faculty of hearing? Do they listen to what's being said when the Quran is being recited, when the ahadith are being read, uh, when the reminder is being given? Do they actually listen to what's being said? Okay. Aw ya'qilun. Or do they yani, use their aql, the intellect, to reflect over those meanings? In whom illa kil an'am. No, in fact, they are like animals. Bel hum abalu sabila. Rather, they are more misguided. They are more misguided than the animals. Why? Because the Shaykh says, Bel abalu min al an'am. They are more misguided than the animals. Aruda min al an'am. They are more useless than animals. Why is that? That's because animals were created for a particular purpose, okay? And they serve their purpose, right? You can use them for farming. Um, their skins are, you know, used for clothing. The only purpose is to yani, eat, drink, procreate, and you be used for human consumption 
But mankind, us as people, we weren't created for the same purpose as animals. Okay, we were given the ability to use our intellects, to think, to ponder, to reflect. So the one who throws away these blessings, they have not used those blessings they've, they've been given. Okay, they've wasted it away. So for that reason, they are worse than animals. Yeah, the animals fulfill the purpose they were created for, but those who don't use their intellect to reflect over the creation of Allah and why they were created, then they have thrown away the purpose, right? They haven't fulfilled the purpose why they were created, and thus they are worse than animals. This is what the Shaykh is saying. طيب. So he says here, بَلْ أَضَلُّ مِنَ الْعَامِ They are more misguided than animals, and they are more useless than animals. Alright, and غَالِبُ هَؤُلَاءِ الْمَخْلُقِينَ أَرْضَ مِنَ الْأَنْعَامِ Right, once again, most of these creations, they are more useless than animals. لَا يُفَكِّرُونَ وَلَا يَنْظُرُونَ فِي مَعَادِهِمْ وَلَا فِي طَاعَةِ رَبِّهِمْ Right, they do not reflect over, they do not med meditate over um, the life after this, life after death, the resurrection. Nor do they reflect over being obedient to their Lord. خَيْرْ لَا هَمَّ لَهُمْ إِلَّا الدُّنْيَا Alright, they have no importance, they give no importance except for the dunya and their livelihood and the attractions and beauties of the of the dunya right, and, their food, and their places of eating like restaurants and whatnot and places of drinking and that's the only thing they give importance to so they're just like the animals rather they are more misguided the shaykh says here لَيْسَ لَهُمْ نَظَرْ فِي الْآخِرَةِ they do not contemplate over the hereafter وَلَهْتِمَامَ بِالْآخِرَةِ nor give any importance to that فَحْذَرْ So beware, O Muslim, O person with sound intellect, O one who has submitted their will to Allah Azza wa Jalla, أَن تَكُونَ مِنْ هَاؤُلَاءِ الَّذِينَ جَعْلَهُمُ اللَّهُ أَضَلُّ مِنَ الْأَنْعَامِ So beware of being like those people whom Allah Azza wa Jalla has made more misguided than animals and more useless مِنَ الْأَنْعَامِ أَرْدَى من الأنعام more useless than animals. والأنعام الإبر والبقر والغنم possible for animals like you know camels and cows and sheep to be guided towards their purpose and their and benefits. Yeah, benefiting the people, right? They go to their owners and they avoid that which will harm them. وتنفع الناس and they benefit the people. From what we just mentioned earlier, any farming and using their skin and fur, etc., and food as well. As for those people who are worse than the animals, he says, They don't benefit the people. Okay? Yani in the animals, there's benefit for the people. But these people, they don't benefit. Rather, you'll find it with some of them. They even harm the Muslims, okay, in their deen. So not only do they not benefit the Muslims, they go a step further and harm them in their deen, in their way of life. يَدْعُونَهُمْ إِلَى النَّارِ The Shaykh says, calling them to the fire, inviting them to the fire, we are the Then he quotes a verse in Surah Al-A'raf where Allah Azza wa Jalla says, وَلَقَدْ ذَرَأْنَا and he explains, يعني خلقنا And certainly, Allah says, And certainly we ذرأنا The Shaykh explains, يعني خلقنا يعني we created لجهنم كثيرا من الجن والإنس For Jahannam, many among the jinn and mankind لهم قلوب لا يفقهون بها ولهم أعين لا يبصرون بها ولهم آذان لا يسمعون بها which could be translated to mean that they have hearts they do not understand with. And they have eyes they do not see with. And they have ears that they do not hear with. Allah says, أُولَٰئِكَ كَالْأَنْعَامِ بَلْ هُمْ أَضَلْ They are like cattle, animals. In fact, they are even less guided. They are more misguided. أُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْغَافِلُونَ These people are entirely heedless. They are truly heedless. Yani they are heedless of Allah Azza wa Jalla, the Creator. Wa anid al They are heedless of the 
next abode, the hereafter. وَعَمَّا جَاءَتْ بِهِ الرُّسُولِ And they're also heedless of what the messengers came with. فَلَا هَمَّ لَهُمْ إِلَّا دُنْيَاهُمْ They give no importance to anything except for their dunya and their livelihood. وَأَكْلَهُمْ Alright, وَشُرْبَهُمْ فَقَطْ And their foods and what they drink only. وَلِهَذَا صَارُوا أَضَلُّ مِنَ الْأَنْعَامِ أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ ذَلِكِ And for that reason they have become more misguided than cattle or animals. And I seek refuge in Allah from that, the Shaykh says. وَنَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ ذَلِكَ أَيْضًا And we also seek refuge in Allah from that as well. طيب, so this is the explanation of that. Then he goes on to the second verse. He provides more details regarding the second verse. Uh, he says, وَمَدَحَ اللَّهُ عِبَادَهُ الْمُتَّقِينَ That Allah, He praises His servants that have taqwa. Alright, taqwa is a term where it requires further explanation. And he also praises أصحاب العقول السليمة Those who possess sound intellect فَقَالَ إِنَّ فِي خَلْقِ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَاخْتِلَافِ اللَّيْلِ وَالنَّهَارِ لَآيَاتِ Quoting the verse again Meaning it has uh, clear indisputable evidences and proofs Okay لِأُولِ الْأَلْبَابِ For those who have uh, attentive sound intellects He says هِيَ الْعُقُولَ الصَّحِيحَ المنتبه. ثم وصفهم فقال Then he describes them by saying يعني Who are these people that are أولو الألباب الذين يذكرون الله قياما They are those who remember Allah standing وقعودا As well as sitting وعلى جنوبهم As well as on their sides ويتفكرون في خلق السماوات والأرض And they reflect and contemplate and think and ponder over the creation of the heavens and earth and they say, رَبَّنَا مَا خَلَقْتَ هَذَا بَاطِلًا O oh, our Lord, you have not created this without any purpose. You have not created all this, yani, aimlessly. سُبْحَانَكَ فَقِنَا عَذَابَ النَّارِ Glory be to you, you are free from all imperfections. Protect us from the torment of the fire. A point of benefit, not mentioned here, but mentioned by a Shaykh Abdul Razak al-Badr, Hafizullah Ta'ala. In his explanation of the Risala, written by Ibn Abdul Wahhab, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, uh, regarding what are the seven things that are obligatory upon the servant when he hears a command from Allah. A very beneficial Risala treaty I advise everyone to read and benefit from. In the explanation, Shaykh Abdul Razak, he mentions that from this verse, we see that from the means of being saved from the fire is reflecting over the heavens and earth reflecting over the jibal the mountains huh? to reflect over Allah's creation subhanAllah and that's something anyone can do you can do that right now and if you do that that's a means of you being saved from the fire because Allah mentions this Right, he mentioned الَّذِينَ يَذْكُرُونَ اللَّهَ قِيَامًا وَقُعُودًا وَعَلَى جُنُوبِهِمْ وَيَتَفَكَّرُونَ فِي خَلْقِ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ And then right after what does he say? رَبَّنَا مَا خَلَقْتَ هَذَا بَاطِلًا سُبْحَانَكَ فَقِنَا عَذَابَ النَّارِ SubhanAllah So save us from the torment of the fire, the punishment of the fire So there's a connection there, and that's something that many of us, perhaps, Allahu A'lam We are, we are a bit negligent of doing but bi'idhnay ta'ala after this you know court after this class i hope everyone will begin to uh, practice this on a daily basis yani yeah, reflecting over allah's creation and how amazing it is watching videos talking about the universe and you know animals in, in the jungle and just reflecting over allah azza wa beautiful creation and that can be a means of being saved from the fire Ta'ibin. um the Shaykh Rahimahullah Ta'ala, he continues by saying, يَتَفَكَّرُونَ فِي مَخْلُقَاتِ اللَّهِ They reflect over the creations of Allah, the sama, the heavens, and the earth, وَجِبَال, okay, as well as the mountains, uh, and the oceans, and the rivers, and the various different creations of Allah, min Bani Adam, from Bani Adam, as well as from other than Bani Adam, and they realize, that لم تخلق عبثا 
that these things were not created without a purpose. Wala suda, nor vainly, wala baltila, nor aimlessly. Bel khuliqat li amrin azim. Rather, they were created for a tremendous affair. Kama qala azza wa jalla, just as Allah said, Ayahsabu al-insanu ayyutraka suda. Does mankind believe or think or falsely think that they will be left neglected without any purpose? Yani muhmalan la yu'mar wa la yunha that they were created and they were abandoned carelessly and they wouldn't be commanded with things nor prohibited against things? La, obviously not. It's a rhetorical question. Qala azza wa jalla afahasibtum anna ma khalaqnakum abatha wa annakum ilayna la turja'un do you all think annama khalaqnakum that we created you all abatha carelessly yani without any purpose and that wa annakum ilayna la turja'un and that you would not be returned back to us yani bi'sa hadhihi al husba wa hadha al dhan how evil is this type of thoughts these this type of thought thinking yani And he quotes another verse from the Quran where Allah Azawajalla says, وَمَا خَلَقْنَا السَّمَاءَ وَالْأَرْضَ وَمَا بَيْنَهُمَا بَاطِلًا And we did not create the heavens and earth, and what is in between them, aimlessly, without any purpose. Alright, مَا خُلِقُوا بَاطِلًا That um, they were not created without any purpose. بَلْ خُلِقُوا لِأَمْرٍ عَظِيمٍ Rather they were created for a tremendous affair. And for this reason, Allah Azza wa Jalla continues by saying, "Thalika vannu al-ladina kafaru." That is the assumption of those who disbelieve. "Fawail al-ladina kafaru min al-nar." So woe to those who disbelieve from the fire. يعني ظنهم أن هذه الأشياء لا معنى لها. All right, they believe that these things, the creation of Allah Azza wa Jalla, it has no meaning. ولا حقيقة لها nor is there any reality ولا حكمة لها nor any حكمة يعني any wisdom behind its creation نسأل الله العافية we ask Allah عز وجل for protection and safety so as a result فضلوا وهلكوا وأهلكوا غيرهم for that reason these people went astray and they were destroyed and they also destroyed those يعني others others يعني وأهلكوا غيره they destroyed others and he quotes Allah عز وجل ويقول جل وعلا منبها عباده and Allah says alerting his servants أفلا ينظرون إلى الإبن كيف خلقت وإلى السماء كيف رفعت وإلى الجبال كيف نصبت وَإِلَى الْأَرْضِ كَيْفَ سُطِحَتْ Surah Al-Ghashiyah يعني, Do they not ever reflect on camels How they were imperfectly created How the sky, how it was raised high And the mountains, how they were firmly set up And the earth, how it was spread out, leveled out The Shaykh says Rahimahullah Ta'ala يعني, Meaning Do they not يفكرون في هذه الإبل العظيمة Do they not reflect over this Tremendous creation, yani the creation of the camels. كيف خلقها ربها? How Allah Azza wa Jalla created it? في خلقة عظيمة in a tremendous form. Yani these camels are able to bear heavy loads and benefit the people in their transportation. وتنفع الناس في تنقلاتهم من مكان إلى مكان from one place to another. وكانت هي الحمولة قبل وجود هذه السيارات وهذه الطائرات and this was their form of transportation before the appearance of يعني cars today and airplanes alright people throughout the world for, for thousands of years were using these camels as their form of transportation من مكان إلى مكان from one place to another من إقليم إلى إقليم يعني from one area to another ومن بلاد إلى بلاد يعني from different land one land to another وَيَشْرَبُونَ مِنْ أَلْبَانِهَا And they would benefit from those camels by drinking from their milk. So not only were they using these camels as a form of transportation, but they were able to fill their bellies as well. 
Subhanallah. So from this aspect, we see the virtue of, you know, using camels as transport over cars. Because obviously you can't benefit from cars in that aspect. What are you going to drink the gas? La ilaha illallah. Alright. min lahumiha, And they will also benefit from, yani, it's laham. When they would, if a camel became sick or if it was unable to travel anymore, they would sacrifice it and eat from it. And they will also benefit from the hair, right, the fur on the camel, using it for their clothing, etc. And also benefit from the, their skins. And likewise, yani in regards to other types of cattle like the bakr, cows, um, sheep, and game that they caught that Allah Azza has made permissible for them. Khair. So, yani and muhim when Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "Afala yanzuruna ila al-ibni kaifa khuliqat," do they not ponder and reflect over the camel and how it was created? Right? Limada khuliqat. Why was it created? And why was it created for you? Wa limada khuliqat lakum. All right. As Allah Azza wa Jalla says, "Huwa al-ladhi khalaq lakum ma fi al-ard jamia." He is the one who created for you everything in the earth. Right? Doesn't the person think about? Why are these things created to serve us and not the other way around? Right? There's, there's a reason for that. Why animals are there for us to benefit from and it's not the other way around. Does a person not reflect over that? Alright, then he goes on to speak about the same thing in regards to Jibal. Alright, how it keeps the earth firm, keeps it stable. And then the Shaykh Hafil uh, Rahimullah Ta'ala goes on to speak about uh, different affairs like reflecting over oneself as well okay as Allah Azza wa Jalla says wa fi anfusikum afala tubsirun yani do not do you not reflect over your own selves like you think about the human body how amazing it is Allahu akbar la ilaha illallah just watch a video of how subhanallah different processes like when you get a cut Automatically, there are you know blood cells sent and you know different things happening in your body to repair your body. You know how when you get a fever, it's your body's mechanism to fight off a disease, right? When you are too cold, what happens? Your body begins to what? Shunt your extremities start to become cold because the blood rushes from your extremities to your core, the core of your body, to save your life, yani to keep you living longer. So it rushes to the core of your body, which is the heart in that area, and that's why you feel the fr when you feel cold, the first thing to become cold are your extremities. It's doing that to preserve your life, right? The same thing with if a person starves, right? It starts to eat the fat in your body, so so to sustain itself. Just learn about the body, and Allah says here, "Wafi anfusikum afala Yani there are signs in your own self if you ponder and reflect over it. Will you not? Afala tubusirun, will you not reflect over it? Will you not reflect over these signs and think about these signs? And the Shaykh goes on to mention um, explaining the hadith where it says, Atkayisu mandana nafsahu wa amina lima ba'da al mawt wal ajizu man atba' nafsahu hawaha tamanna ala Allahi al amani. Which can be translated to mean a wise man is the one who calls himself to account and refrains from doing evil deeds and does noble deeds to benefit him himself after death and the foolish person the, the incapable person is the one who subdues himself to his temptations and desires and seeks from Allah the fulfillment of his vain desires la ilaha illallah طيب لعلنا سنكتفي بهذا القدر it's about 40 minutes I wanted to you know maybe spend only 20 minutes but قدر الله وما شفعاله this is what the Shaykh has presented. May Allah have mercy on him. And expand his grave. And make him, as well as us, among the people of Jannah Firdaus A'la, Bighayri Hisab Wala Adab, without any punishment nor any reckoning. May Allah Azza wa accept this reminder and make it proof for us on the day of judgment and not against us. May Allah Azza wa forgive us for our sins and our shortcomings. May Allah Azza wa Jalla make the Qur'an a proof for us, not against us as well. May Allah grant us tawfiq, success, in implementing what we have just read after this recording. Allahumma ameen. 
سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته